Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at a quick little activity gem and hopefully this time OBS will actually record my screen so I'm not talking to a black screen for a solid 10 minutes. Basically what this is going to allow us to do is add some activities to uh, different models and then anytime a user uh, does any of the CRUD actions to them, creates them, uh, updates them, or destroys them, you'll be able to get a small little activity feed that looks similar to, if I scroll back up here, uh, this activity feed right here where you can see if someone removed a post, edited it, created it, etc. And you can have multiple different types. So here you have like comments as well. This is gonna be using the public activity gem and some of the information in their uh, wiki to hopefully make it work a little bit better. To get started, let me make sure this is empty. Let's do a Rails new video and just go ahead and run this. So. Uh, like I was saying before I realized that my entire screen was black the whole time, uh, effectively what this allows you to do is set this up for multiple models and then just sort of forget about it as opposed to the usual route of uh, needing to uh, you know step through these things multiple times for every time you make a new model, uh, you know you go through and you're like, okay, uh, how do I hook this up again? Uh, or you know creating your own system, which can take quite a bit of time. So in this case, all we really have to do, let's come into the GitHub page, uh, scroll down a bit. We have to add the gem to our gem file. And we're also gonna be using the uh, devise gem for this. So we're just gonna quickly grab both of these, paste these in. We got devise 4.9 and the public activity gem. Go ahead and run a bundle. After we do that, we can then run the Rails G public activity colon migration command to do the migration. You can then do a rails g devise colon install command to install device. And we can do a rails g devise user command to add our user model. Now that that's done, we want to create a rails g scaffold post with a title, oops, and a body of type text. And then we can run a rails db colon migrate command to migrate our database. So that takes care of all of the setup there. Now what I wanna do is create a quick little dashboard. So we'll say Rails G controller pages home, just so we can have a home page. And now let's come into our app, or let's come into our config and our routes.rb, change the get to a root and the slash to a hash. Go ahead and save that, we'll wait for it to save. And now we can close both of those. Now to set up the current user so that whenever we create a post, we can see who created it. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to just make it application wide. I'll have a link to both of these resources in the video description. Uh, this wiki article right here just says go into your controllers, your application controller, and then just put in the include public activity colon colon store controller. And then you just come into the model you want to track, which is gonna be in our models and our post.rb. And then in here, what you wanna do is, uh, let me grab my notes real quick. You wanna grab the include for the public activity model again. And then you just wanna say the tracked owner is this proc block where you have the controller and the model and you set the controller.current user. So that's the little bit of magic that's gonna allow us to do something like activity.owner to see who owns an activity. Now that that's done, let's close both of these. And now we can come over to our app and our uh, views, our pages and our homepage. So inside of our, well, actually, let's come into our home con our pages controller real quick uh, so that I don't have to do this later. Let's just very quickly authenticate the user when they visit the home action, just so it turns into a user dashboard. And now we can declare our activities is equal to, and here you have a couple options. You can do something like this, where you just do a public activity colon colon activity dot all to get all of them, but that'll work for all users and not just uh, your your current user. If you only wanna see the activities for your current user, you just go ahead and do this, where you hit F11, you call activity.where, the owner ID is the current user.id, and then order it by created at DESC. That works just fine. That'll give you your current users only. So we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and we'll leave it like that. Now let's come over to our pages and our homepage. Now in our homepage, uh, what I want to do is, I'm gonna copy and paste in a rather intimidating looking block of code, and then we'll just step through it. So what we do is we loop through our activities here, and I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this section so we can just look at this section by section. We loop through each of our activities. We then check if the trackable type is equal to post because we might have logic for multiple types. In my case, I only have a post, but I wanted to show you how you can use multiple types. I then put everything inside of a div just so it's a bit easier to see 
uh, which uh, like which block the logic belongs to. I then check the activity.key, and each of these is going to be uh, by default a uh, model dot action. So here we have post model and the destroy action. So if we destroy the post, our activity.key will be post.destroy. And then we just grab something from the uh, config locales, which we can do real quick by coming down here to our config and our locales and our en.yaml. And then inside of our en.yaml, we can just set up the public activity ones, which if I tab this over, we have the public underscore activity, the post, and then for the create, the update, and the, the destroy. And the way that we use these, uh, and you can of course change the, the text and the strings, is you just call public activity, which is this public activity dot post, which is this dot post, and then dot whatever your action is. And it'll translate this into whatever's in these strings. So it's just a neat way to keep these strings centralized. So that takes care of that. We can now see that uh, if we de de delete a post, it'll show up as deleted a post and then with the timestamp. In our else block here, if we aren't worrying about deleting a post, uh, then we have access to stuff like the post title and the, the owner of the post. We didn't really have access to that in the destroying of the post, just because uh, after we destroy the post, we don't have the title or the body of the post anymore because we've deleted it. We don't have that level of redundancy. So in here for our uh, creation or updated, we can just say post is equal to activity.trackable, owner is equal to activity.owner. If our post is nil, we can just go ahead and go to the next item. This might happen if you have a old activity for a post where you did have a title and then you deleted it. Uh, you still have that old activity, but you don't have that old post anymore. So you need to just skip it. In here, we then handle all of the information for our posts. So we have the post.title, the post.body, the uh, activity.created at. We have a helper method here for the uh, activity. This is inside of a custom helper. So we come up here to app helpers inside of here we right click new file call this activity underscore helper dot rb and uh, the reason why we do this inside of our activity module we have an action name we don't need this puts we just call the same uh, locale thing for the public underscore activity dot and then the activity dot key and the reason why this is nice is because this gives us the same functionality as this public activity dot activity dot key, but we just have to call action underscore name activity and it just cleans up this entire bit right here. I left this in just so it's a bit clearer that this does the same thing as this, uh, but to actually test this, we're gonna have to go ahead and start our server with a Rails S. We'll go over to localhost port 3000 and it'll tell us to sign up. We'll come in here, we'll do a dean at ex example.com, hit control A and then just paste that in as our password as well. And now if we come over to localhost port 3000 slash posts, we'll do a test in a case. I'll hit enter here so we can see this a bit better. If I click create, we can scroll up and we can see it does create the posts, but it also inserts into activities. It gives us the trackable type as well as the owner ID and some other stuff. So we can see the trackable type is of type post and the owner is a user with a ID of one. So if we come over to our dashboard here, we can see this uh, pops up now. And we can see this has the test title with the case body, the created at, and then right here, it has created this post, which is from this activity name activity. And that's coming from our en.yaml, but it's a really nice little helper. Here you can see dean at example.com also created this post, but it's without the helper. So it ends up being a little bit less readable here and a little bit harder to maintain. Uh, but the nice thing about this, of course, is if we uh, come over to localhost port 3000, sign up as john at doe.com, right? And we click sign up. You'll see John doesn't see any of these things yet, but if I come over to localhost port 3000 slash post, this post does exist. I can just say, uh, John made this, hit create. And now if I refresh, John will see this, but Dean won't. But of course, if we want them to see each other's posts, we can always come into our pages controller. We can comment this out and just do at activities equals public activity and then i'm just going to change this to dot all save this and now dean should see multiple of these showing up 
You can then, of course, come over here and you can, uh, you know, delete this post, come over here, and now we can see we don't have that uh, John created post anymore because we're skipping it because we don't have the details for it. Uh, but we can instead see that a post was deleted. You could, of course, keep like the owner information here if you wanted to. Uh, I just got a little bit lazy there. But hopefully this is a uh, interesting tool for you. It's again, it's an older gem, uh, but I hadn't really heard about it until earlier today. Uh, it seems pretty useful. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, I'll have a link to the GitHub page for the, the gem as well as um, the source code here uh, in the video description. So feel free to check those out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.